Greetings and welcome to another Factorio tutorial. I'm Catherine of Sky, and today we're building smelting columns. First of all, I love, love, love my patrons and supporters. Thank you so very much for your support. I hope you're staying safe and well. Many kitty kisses to you. Starting out in Factorio can be a boatload of information. With all the things and all the stuff, lots of numbers, rates and ratios bombard you with data. In this tutorial, we'll break those down to build efficient smelting columns that will last you until end game. So when you're designing your smelting columns, the first thing you want to do is keep in mind where you want your main bus structure to be. So we're going to say we're going to build our main bus southward and we're going to put our smelting columns off to the right. That's partly because in the tutorial, I want to be able to have the most visible um, build style for you to see and it's easier to count if they are laid out horizontally. You'll want your smelting area to be at the beginning of the bus with room for expansion. So we're gonna have plenty of room to expand down that side. At the beginning of the game, you'll want at least one full belt of iron and one of copper, but you should leave space for at least four belts of each. That means eight smelting columns in total in the main base. Later on, you'll probably want to move smelting to outposts, so no need to plan for more space than that. Smelting columns require ore and coal to function, so keep that in mind when you're planning on where to put them. I tend to put them quite close to the ore patches themselves. Now the coal is the fuel for the process, and the ore is what gets smelted into the actual plates. So initially your iron supply from making belts is pretty limited. So placing the array close to these sources is highly desirable. Now let's talk about ratios for a minute here. We want to make a full yellow belt of plates. A yellow belt moves 15 items per second and a stone furnace can make 0 0.3125 plates per second. 15 divided by 0 0.3125 is 48. Thus, we need 48 furnaces to make a full belt. Luckily, the ratio of ore to plates is one to one for iron and copper. And so we can plan around that uh, to have one belt in and one belt out. Looking at the Factorio Cheat Sheet website, we can see that there's a commonality in numbers of furnaces. Because red belts are twice as fast as yellow ones and steel furnaces are twice as fast as stone furnaces, with this array, we can use yellow belts and stone furnaces and then upgrade to red belts and steel furnaces and not have to change anything about the design. This is very handy. Over the years, I have created and seen so many different designs. My favorite and probably the most efficient is the one that I've adapted from JD Plays. I modified the fuel delivery system a bit to fit with my particular play style. Now this design uses two columns of furnaces and we're going to have 24 on each side of a central output belt. So let's go ahead and place those down. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, many, many, many. Let's just count. We can count by using a blueprint. Okay, wow, that's 23, we were close. Nice, you can use the blueprint or deconstruction planner to count how many items, you just press Q to cancel that. Then we're gonna put a belt coming out of here. There we go, leave one space there. You can see there's a one tile gap. Now we're wanting another one tile gap and then the other furnaces. All right, so this is going to be our output belt. Now, um, what we want to do is put the input belts on. We'll go ahead and put those on either side. Again, leave one tile gap for the inserters. There we go. Okay, and we want to feed it from this side. Now, we are going to need a space of, let's see, one, two, three, and four. Four spaces. Let me just make sure. One, two, three, four. Yep, that's correct. And we'll have the same going here, like this. Now, the brilliance of this design is in the next part here, the splitters. 
And these splitters go on opposite sides of the belt. So anything that's fed from this side will always be on the inside of the belt. And anything fed on this side will always be the outside of the belt. Okay. So what we want to do now is this is going to be our ore coming in from uh, Iron Land over here. So let me just go ahead and put a belt, uh, something like this. Okay. Put that one there just to be ready. And this one, we're going to feed from an inside line. So let's go ahead and get this thing set up. So we need a splitter here. And then we take our belts this way. And that goes connecting into here. And we're going to need undergroundies. Actually, that one would go here. Because uh, we would presumably have another array here. And that requires another outside belt. So the coal is going to come in on this side. Uh, and the coal is pretty, uh, pretty useful to these furnaces. You can feed 666 furnaces with a single full belt of coal. And that's almost 14 arrays. It's kind of crazy. So uh, the next thing what we need to do is we need to feed these furnaces. So we're going to go ahead and just add our inserters. One in, one out. Uh, in the beginning of the game, what I usually do is just put the inserting ones and then I pull uh, items from the furnaces just to, you know, handcraft some stuff. But when you have enough inserters, then you might as well just put them all down. Okay, there we go. It's a tiny bit of uh, work, but it is extremely, extremely useful. And this will net you an entire belt of solid solid belt of iron or copper all right there we go now the next thing is power poles we're going to have a central power pole line here you can just run and drag and it will put them down uh by where they need to go okay then get ones down here yes and then on top I'm not sure if i drag them the other way if they'll work the same way so i'm just going to drag them this way and of course, just hook it up to your power. Now, uh, I think it's time for us to start feeding this nice little array here. Let's go and get some coal from here. All right. And for each of these arrays, you are going to need 2.2 coal miners. Like if you're really uh, yeah, hungering for them. Um, but normally when I have enough uh, machinery and product to make lots of things. I just fill an entire belt. Okay, and power poles for those as well. Okay, there we go. I'm gonna be sneaky and grab some long distance power poles there from my cache. You probably won't have these at the beginning of the game, but you can use tiny little power poles as well. So we're gonna just, we can actually do that for the second array here. Let's just take these over. Now, uh, the ratio for miners is you, that you need 30 miners to fill a belt. So we're going to go ahead and try to put down 30 miners. Now note that the miners have a 5x5 five five area of effect. Now that means you could put them like this and they would mine all the ore. But I like to have a greater throughput, so I just put them next to each other like this. Okay, let's go back and put some on this side. I want to make sure that they are evenly distributed per side if possible. Also note that ones on the end uh, have less, well, <laughs> less in quotation marks, 91k and 177, but these are having 1.6 million uh, in density. But in your start area, you'll have much, much uh, smaller amounts of ore coming in. Let's just make sure and check we have enough of these guys. I don't think we do, but let's let's check with our deconstruction planner. 28. Oh, wow. Okay, so we need more. We probably need some on this side. Um, so let's just go ahead and... Well, actually, we can count and see. We need 15 on each side, so that one has 15. And so then we'll need another three on this side. We'll go ahead and be... Um, 
yeah, slightly not precise here. Uh, this is going to go on this side, like this, and I am merging it on that side because of the lack on this specific side here. But normally you would join it with a splitter. So anyway, all of this is going to come in and you can see immediately how this is splitting alongside here. You see the coal is always on the inside of the belt, leaving the outside of the belt free for ore to get in there. You've probably noticed that there's an extra space here. KOS, why didn't you smush it a little bit more? And that is because we, um, we want to align this with steel arrays uh, where we can put in ore and get steel out the other side instead of just plates. So I'm not going to go over the entire build of this, but I am going to show you my blueprint. All right, so this is the correct direction. We'll just rotate this and we'll place this down. You see how if you skip a space there, this one neatly fits in. And this is where that extra space comes in. All right, robots. Go, go, go. I was a tiny bit sneaky and snuck back to the base to get some more, some more stuff there. Um, so in this uh, eventuality, let's go ahead and divert the iron this way into the steel array so that you can see. All right, steel is kind of sneaky. Uh, it takes five times as long to make as iron plates. However, uh, it also takes five iron plates. So what you can do is you can have one smelter that makes iron from, uh, from ore. And then this one takes five iron plates and makes it into steel, which is going to come out on this belt. So this one is just chugging along here. And we'll see as soon as this gets five plates, it's going to make a chunk of steel. But again, it takes five times as long. And if you want to make a full belt of steel, you need five of these arrays. Now, luckily, you don't need quite as much steel as you do just plain iron. But this is a way that you can just feed in ore and not have to have multiple of these arrays and try to circle the belts around in order to reprocess that iron. Whenever you're ready to upgrade into steel furnaces, remember that they burn the same amount of fuel as stone ones, but produce at twice the speed, so you're essentially using only half the fuel. Thus, I like to upgrade to red belts as soon as possible. Also remember to add another 30 miners and a red belt coming in to feed them. In my blueprints cache, I keep arrays for both left feeding belts and right feeding belts, and also one for in and out on the same side. This can be useful for very pretty setups where the ore comes in and the plates belt takes its place on the way out. One final note, when you're making stone bricks, each of these requires two pieces of stone. And so the smelting arrays should be half as long, but you'll need twice as many unless you feed from the side. That is, you need two full belts of stone to make one full belt of stone bricks coming out. Another final note, in the old days of Factorio, people used to make arrays that could accommodate 3x3 electric furnaces. However, we know that electric furnaces are the same speed as steel furnaces and they are more energy efficient if you're using solid fuels like coal or solid fuel. There are very few reasons to use electric. One is if you are building in a location without fuel. Two, if you're moving toward an end game modulated system using productivity modules with speed beacons. And three, if you're using mostly solar power for your base. Otherwise, stick with steel furnaces. There's plenty of coal around and they are super efficient. I really hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and found it useful. If you have any questions or want to make new Factorio friends and hang out, please come to our Discord. Thank you so very much for joining me. Take care of yourselves and each other, and I'll see you next time.